Hello, this is Dr. Eric with the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology, School of Medical Sciences, UCC Cape Coast. I want to take you through the micrographs of the muscle tissue. So if you look at these micrographs, these are actually transverse sections. Okay, so you can see that they are in profiles. All right, so you have this profile, another one, another one, that's another one. So all these are muscle fibers enclosed by an endomysium. And you can see this nuclei at the periphery. If you take just this muscle fiber, you have at least one, two, three nuclei. So that is what multinucleated. And the nuclei are the periphery or superficial. So we have to appreciate that. Also, you can see this um, connective tissue as well. You can see that one and this. So these are the perimysium. Okay, perimysium. So this will be one fascicle. Within the fascicle, are individual muscle fibers that have endomysium around them okay and then within the muscle fibers like this one under high power you can actually see some of the myofibrils okay studded in so this is a transverse section as well you can see the multi nucleated appearance here too you can see that one two three four five nuclei and then you can also see those profiles like dotted pink spots representing the myofibrils. Okay, so in this case, because um, it's a zoomed in session, you will not find the epimysium, okay, covering the entire muscle tissue. All right, so you can see the peri there and then you can also see the endo right so that was for skeletal muscle yeah you should be able to tell once you see the multinucleation and then the superficial positioning of the nuclei that should be a skeletal muscle you shouldn't confuse yourself at all because this cardiac muscle is also distinct so you can see the longitudinally a running, you know, uh, muscle uh, fibers. And this is a, a longitudinal session, okay? This is not a transverse session like we saw in the, in the skeletal muscle. So what do we remember about the cardiac muscle in terms of their characteristics? We know that they are uh, longitudinal, they are branched, so when you follow a particular uh, course of a fiber, you realize that at a point it branches. So you can see that there's a branching here, there's a branching there, there's a branching there. So if you want to move from right to left like that, see that when you get here, there's a branching, all right? If you are following this, there's a branching, there's a branching. This one is also showing some branching. So that tells you that this is a cardiac mass. Apart from the branching nature, another significant feature is the intercalated disc. So the arrows are pointing at the intercalated discs, okay? The nuclei are centrally placed and they may be one or two. So you can see that. However, the nuclei, position of the nuclei is not the best to distinguish cardiac mass because there are times that the nuclei might be pushed to the periphery. You see them at the periphery because of the branching nature. Okay, so um, if you are looking at centrally placed nucleus in a cardiac mass, then you should be looking at regions where there are no branching, like this one. Okay, in that case, you see them, you know, in central some of them can be moved to the periphery uh, depending on how the muscles are also positioned. So the take home for this particular slide is the presence of the branching 
okay, the branching nature, and then also intercalated discs. So again, for cardiac muscle, a longitudinal session again, this is a cardiac muscle transverse session. So for longitudinal session, you see them running parallel like that, and then they branch at some point. You see intercalated disc, that's a nucleus, that's another nucleus, that's another nucleus. And like I said earlier on, if you want to use a nucleus position, you have to look at a portion where the fiber is uh, very continuous. Okay. You can see a very nice branching pattern here. See, there's a bifurcation, it's like a V, but here it is continuous. When you look at the transverse section, you see uh, several profiles. Okay, so that is how the appearance will be for cardiac muscle. For the skeletal muscle, we realized that uh, they were larger, okay, in terms of the muscle fibers were larger and their multinucleations were also very, very, very conspicuous, unlike this one, okay? So you, you can't count so many nuclei in, in a fiber. So this is just one nucleus, that's a whole fiber, okay? Compared to the skeletal muscle that we could count six or five or so nuclei. All right. So if you want to compare skeletal muscle with the cardiac, that is a very clear skeletal muscle. Again, one, two, three, four, five nuclei. Okay, and this muscle fiber is quite huge compared to that of the cardiac muscle. And the cardiac muscles also have this particular pattern of appearance. Okay, you can see that the appearance is not uh, as smooth as that of the skeletal muscles. All right, good. And it uh, usually has a single nucleus. Okay. For smooth muscles, um, they are fusiform, as we said already. So this is the way they will appear. These are the nuclei within the smooth muscle. It's also a longitudinal session, okay? So the nucleus actually shows the fusiform nature of the muscle cell, okay? So you can see that the nucleus is tapering at the ends. So that's the way you look at it. Again, these nuclei are also tapering at the ends, and then wider in the midline or the middle portion. This is a smooth muscle viewed in a transverse session. And this is a smooth muscle in a longitudinal session. Right. This is a gland. And that is connective tissue. So I think with these few micrographs, uh, you should be okay with identifying the three major types of muscles we've covered so far. So again, this is showing you a blood vessel that is a internal elastic lamina, that is the endothelium, and that is tunica media, tunica adventitia. So you usually have smooth muscles in the tunica media of the yeah, blood vessels. Then that should also be smooth muscle. Okay, so nuclei are fusiform. So that should be okay for now. This is more of a an axon. But uh, since we are not doing a nervous system or the nervous tissue, we will just leave it as such. Okay. And we want to compare the three uh, muscles in transverse sessions. So 
obviously that should be skeletal muscle uh, big uh, muscle fiber with a lot of uh, nuclei and also the endomysium is also very clear then you can have a perimysium as well the cardiac muscle this is how they will appear not as large a muscle fiber as that of the skeletal muscle and the nuclei are usually single and centrally placed then i want to add that in the cardiac muscle too you don't find epimysium the epimysium is seen as an epicardium okay so note that and that is smooth muscle thank you very much and i hope this video helps